a butter, a villain in your kitchen, or is it? Today we'll debunk the myths and unwrap the creamy truth. For decades, butter has been at the center of a swirling debate. Some claim it's the golden ticket to Flavortown, while others brand it as a heart-stopping miscreant. But what if we told you there's more to this dairy delight than meets the eye? Today, we delve into the world of butter production, a journey from cow to kitchen. So is butter really that bad? Let's find out how it's actually made. Butter begins its journey as cream extracted from fresh whole milk. This is where the magic begins. You see, whole milk is a cocktail of water, proteins, minerals, and fat globules. It's these fat globules that we're interested in, for they hold the key to our golden delight. Now imagine a spinning dance floor, a whirl of motion, a centrifuge if you will. This is where the cream is separated from the rest of the milk. The milk is spun at high speeds. The fat globules, lighter than the rest of the milk, rise to the top, forming a creamy layer. This cream is then skimmed off, leaving us with the raw material for our butter. It's a dance of science and nature, a ballet of technology and tradition. But we're not done yet. Once we have the cream, it's time for the next step, pasteurization. Pasteurization, an essential step to kill any harmful bacteria. This process involves heating the cream to a specific temperature to ensure any unwanted microorganisms are eliminated. It's a bit like giving our cream a hot bath, but with a scientific twist. By heating it up to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit and then quickly cooling it down, we're not just ensuring its safety, but also enhancing its texture and taste. Now let's talk about culturing. After the cream is pasteurized, we introduce cultures or friendly bacteria into the mix. These little guys are not just safe to consume, they're also flavor magicians. They ferment the cream, creating lactic acid, which gives the butter its characteristic tangy flavor. So if you've ever wondered why butter tastes so good, you can thank these microscopic taste maestros. After pasteurization and culturing, the cream is ready for the most exciting step, churning. But that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned. Churning. The stage where cream transforms into the butter we all know and love. This process is a bit like magic and yet it's pure science. It's here that the cream, rich and thick, begins its journey to become the star of your breakfast table. The process of churning is essentially a vigorous agitation of the cream. The goal? To disrupt the fat globules that are scattered throughout the cream. These globules are naturally coated with proteins and emulsifiers that prevent them from merging together. However, the agitation of churning breaks down these barriers, causing the fat globules to coalesce. As the churning continues, the fat globules stick together more and more, forming clusters that grow larger and larger. These clusters are what we lovingly refer to as butter granules. They're small at first, but as the churning continues, they grow. They start to look less like cream, and more like the butter we're familiar with. But there's more to churning than just forming butter granules. As the cream is churned, it also separates into two distinct parts. The butter granules, of course, but also a liquid. This liquid is the well-known buttermilk, a byproduct of the butter making process, but a delicious product in its own right. With the butter granules ready, we are one step away from the final product. It's time to move on to the finishing touches where the butter takes its final form ready to be spread on your toast and melt in your mouth. The final stage involves washing, salting, and packaging. Now why wash the butter, you may wonder? It's not about cleanliness, but rather it's about removing the lingering buttermilk. This step is crucial as it ensures the butter's freshness and extends its shelf life. Next comes the salting. A sprinkle of salt not only enhances the butter's flavor, but also serves as a natural preservative. This is why salted butter tends to last longer than its unsalted counterpart. The last step is packaging. The butter is molded into familiar shapes we see in stores and wrapped to keep it fresh and protected. Whether it's a block, a stick, or a tub, the packaging is designed with care to ensure that the butter arrives at your home in the best possible condition. And there you have it, from the cow to your kitchen table, that's the story of butter.